What's your deepest, darkest desire? Is there anything you do or wouldn't do to make it a reality? Or do you just feel like it's passed you by in life and you'll never get what you really, really wanted? What if there were a ritual that allowed you to attain that thing that you wanted most? Would you do it? Hmm. Such is the question poised by tonight's story. An interesting ritual pasta, and one I think you'll really enjoy. So my dear friends, it's time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink, and listen. So, you are lost in this world with no chance. You have no hope left. You just need a little miracle. The Twin Lakes run side by side with an island larger than most cities between it. Twixt dam and bridge on the easternmost shore of that island is a bay only reachable by a boat. You may argue there are many such bays, but this one has a difference. Narrow of opening but widening to almost a perfect circle. Here lay the stony backbones of ancient fish. Here the crumbling stone has a stair, carved by no man's hand in it. Leave everything behind. Your cell phone, your wallet, your distractions. You will only be weighed down by them later. You shouldn't even have brought them. One way or the other, you will never return here. Drink and feast, for this is the last chance till you have succeeded. Oh, or if you fail, it will be your last meal. Do not do anything that will impair your mind or reactions. You will need your full wits about you tonight. Gather all your courage and climb the stairs one by one. Count them. Say a prayer every sixteenth step, regardless of what you believe in. It matters not, I think, to this place. Those ancient creatures never knew our gods. Just devote yourself to a moment of honest prayer. It can be as simple as, please let this work. Please let me survive. Top is a wide and long stone shelf, unmarked by anything but time and weather. Do not look back. That path is closed to you. Your future lays forward. You wanted this. You needed this. So, walk forward. The trees are tall and straight. Soon you will notice not a one is different from another. You will think it a bad painting for a moment. The ground is flat, evenly coated with golden leaves of other seasons. No shrubs to hinder you. No vines to trip you. No birds to sing to you. Only the trees. Every one tall and straight. Every one with a tangled crown above. You cannot even see the sky. Don't waste your time trying. Keep walking in as straight a line as you can. Wavering may cause you to miss the stone, or be late in finding it. You must be there before the first star of the evening shows itself. Not that you can see it wish upon. <laughs> that simple child magic. First star I see tonight. Maybe it came from this ritual. But that bright little star is the mark of the start of your trial. Yes, you didn't think that this power was given freely and easily, did you? The stone lays at the very center of the forest of one tree. From here, if you could run a string from it to the outermost tree, the length would not vary no matter what direction you went. The stone is grey and large. Now, 
The limestone cliffs you climbed were large, solid blocks. But this is not soft, cast-type stone. This is hard stone, such as granite. The stone does not belong here. Not to this primordial riverbed. Find a place where you can sit as comfortably as possible on it. It is not a well-cushioned armchair, but you will be here for a time, and you must be still. Find a place on the ground you can look at comfortably. Don't bend your head too much, or you will be sore before the stars appear. But you want to make damn sure you are not looking up. Doubts and fears will prey upon your mind in this first test. This wait for the unseen star. You will remember the tales of a beast that haunts some campground in the area. Yet, 170,000 acres gives a lot of distance between you and that mystery. And it will not come to the forest of one tree. Think for a moment. Has a mosquito buzzed by you? Have you heard a single sound but wind in the leaves high above you? No squirrel chided you. No chipmunk scurried from you. This is not their place or time. Stairs. The mystery staircase is to nowhere that everyone whispers of. Well, have you seen any? Other than the one that most certainly went from one place to another, have you seen anything but trees save the stone you now sit on? No? Then forget them. It grows darker and darker. Somewhere in that unseen sky the sun has been chased away and the star has appeared. Now you think you hear sounds. Footsteps. Breathing. Do not look up. Do not seek them. Sit. Stare at the place you'd chosen earlier. Even if it has grown too dark to actually see it, keep looking at it. Remember it and see it in your mind. It helps to take the shock of the light away. For, if you have stayed still and not been tempted by scurrying feet and panting breaths, now there will be a soft, flickering glow. A single candle held within a cage of glass and metal. Now, a hand appears in your view outstretched to you. This hand you will think nothing of taking, for you have done so often before. A father's hand, a mother's hand, a child's hand. <laughs> this hand you have taken a thousand times before. You will be tempted to action without thought, but do not move. For all that you hold dear, you know they are not here. You may even know they are dead and rotting in a grave. Do not take that hand. It is a lie. The light will fade, and so will the hand. Again, you are left with blackness, with whispers and crunching leaves. It is designed to drive you insane. To force you to look up. To make you flinch. But be still. Soon there will be silence. I promise nothing can touch you. And when it has become silent again, you will find someone now sits beside you. Not that you can see them. And you would best not have reached out to touch them. All the same, you know they are there. This is your guide and guard for the rest of your journey. You have earned her service. Yes, it is almost always a girl, and soon enough you will be able to see her. A bell will sound just one barely audible chime somewhere, and the person beside you will stand and light the lantern you saw earlier. Now speak, soft but firm and clear. 
take me with you. She will pause and lift the lantern to your eye level. Now you can look at her. Memorize every single thing you can about her. The color of her eyes and hair. The curve of lip and eyebrow. The garment she wears. The stitching on it. Any jewelry she wears. Do not fail in this. She will turn from you and start off through the forest. Follow directly behind her. Step as she does. Stop as she does. The walk will seem to take far longer than your journey to the center earlier. And maybe it is longer. Hours will seem to pass. Time has ceased to have meaning here. You can look about while following her, but not much will be seen. Not until you see the trees have become stone pillars. Now they glow soft in the faint light. The leaves have given way to coarse stone, then polished stones and smooth white pillars that are evenly spaced. She will pause before an arch. Oh, hey, those stairs you heard stories about. <laughs> nope, still not a stair in sight, just a tiny fountain surrounded by four arches. Go to the fountain. She will stay in the archway. Coins. So many coins litter the bottom of the fountain. Copper and gold, silver and brass. All bright and shiny. All of them begging you to pick them up. A handful or two would never be missed. And would go so far towards paying those bills. Don't touch them. What you need is laying on the stones below the fountain. A dull metal circle half covered in moss. Pick it up and place it in your pocket. Now, remember I told you to memorize your guardian. All four archways have her in them, but only one is your guardian. You may approach, but do not talk to any until you are certain you have the right one. Ask her, have you seen the key? All four will turn and walk away. Follow the one you have chosen. Have you chosen right? <laughs> you won't know. But follow. You are committed now. Do I know the fate of those who have followed another? No. I can only tell you the correct path. Not the punishment for failing. The pillars have started becoming closer and closer until they are walls with no roof. Along these walls are small shelves. On each shelf is a cup, plate or glass. Every food that you have ever craved will be there. Every drink hot and cold. So casually placed that you might simply pop a bite in your mouth and continue on. Oh, how the sense will tempt you. So easy to reach out and pop a morsel into your mouth. To take a glass and gulp the refreshing liquid. But do not so much as touch this poisonous banquet. So far your tests have mostly been temptations. Easy to see through. Easy to avoid if you know the cost. Things will get harder. Now the shelves hold keys. Tiny ones, huge iron ones, dainty filigree ones, skeleton keys, car keys, ordinary door keys. How will you find the right one? Simple. You already have it. Do you remember the very first key that was yours? Was it for your childhood home? Was it for your first car? Remember that milestone of being old enough to be trusted with a key? Remember that key. Now, remember the disc of metal you place in your pocket. Withdraw it. Hold it tight in your hand. Close your eyes and feel the key in your hand. Remember its shape and color. Remember it perfectly. Now, 
use that key in the door that you first see as you open your eyes. Here, your guardian will not enter. She will offer you the lantern. Tell her no, as you have nothing to repay her loss. Three times it will be offered, and three times you must politely refuse. But the last she will offer instead for you to take a candlestick. This you should accept with a blessing for your guardian. It need not be fancy. A simple one to say is, Blessings on you. May you always have light in the darkness. Light the stub from her lantern and close the door. Oh, here are the stairs at last. But many of them, and they all lead somewhere. So? Which is the one you need? Look at your candle flame. Hold very still and it will flicker. Then point the way. Every time you come to a choice of paths, look at the flame. Up or down, left or right. Let the light guide you through the darkness. How hard is it to give up full control to a tiny flicker of a candle? How insane is it to place everything to the whim of air pushing against fire? You seem to wander aimlessly. No rhyme or rhythm to your journey up and down these stairs and halls. Half the time you will swear you just went up this stair or down this one. Have you noticed the stub never grows shorter? And then the flame dies out and you can't see a thing. Well, I guess it's obvious that you should stand still. Unless you want to crawl about on the floor trying to find one of those stairs. Or simply fall down another. You may stand, sit, kneel, <laughs> tap dance. Whatever you want, just stay in that spot. Something moves near you. Something huge. It moves slow and steady all the way around you. Then, without seeing it, without sound, you know it stands directly in front of you. Now it is time to make your request. It is time to plead your case. Why would money be useful to you? Why would power? Why would the love of that certain someone? Why do you need what you have come here for? It is also time to confess why you have come to a point that this was the only choice left to you. Leave nothing out. They already know everything about you. They want you to strip away all your masks and the lies you have told yourself. You wanted a fresh start, a new chance. First, you must shed all of the old, all of the rot and filth. You need to be reborn again in this place, in this darkness. Only when all has been poured out will you see the lanterns glow again. She will stop and bow her head in five directions, to things you do not see. Then come to stand in front of you. What will you surrender for your gift? I can't tell you the answer to give. Only you know what is a suitable trade for your desire. A man who desired wealth gave up health. A woman who wished to be loved gave up her ability to love in return. Another man wanted power and lived in fear ever after. I came here to be free of the horror my life had become. Now I am safe as a bird in a cage of steel. Never more to want for anything. Never more to leave this place. I stand with my lantern, waiting for you to make your offer. I wait to be told what doorway to take you to.
So, what did you think of that one? Interesting story. Hmm. Now, all these ritual pastas kind of get me in the same way. Would I do it? Would I go through it? Probably not. Tell me what you think, though, in the comments section below. Looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Now, not such a long one tonight, so what I've done is I've uh, tagged another story onto the end of this video, so if you feel like a bit more, stay tuned. <laughs> but that's enough for me for this evening. Back again real soon with a continuation of the deep web story I started last week. Alright, join me again on Friday, but for now, bye bye. Are you sad, lonely, abused, an outcast? Are you being bullied at school or going through a divorce which you did nothing to bring about? Has your life gone so far downhill that you can no longer see the sky? Are the nights closing in on you like a noose? Are you thinking of just simply ending it all? If you are any, or even all of these things, are you angry? Has the painful injustice of your sad situation kindled wrath in your soul? Do you wish to lash out and make the person or persons involved regret all that they've done to you? Do you wish to see them bleed and scream and suffer as you have suffered? <laughs> then, my friend, have I got a solution for you. You see, the world is far more mysterious than most believe. With every scientific breakthrough, there are still five more anomalies which the rational mind cannot explain. Beneath the veneer of industry and happiness lie the shadows that are deeper, older, and more unnatural than can be explained away by a rational mind. There are things that go bump in the night. There are monsters and beasts and things with sharp teeth and appetites for little children. And there are most certainly methods of obtaining power and influence that are dismissed as foolish by the average person. Old rites, ancient curses, and rituals forbidden in their days. All of which work. All of which can open doors. Doors to immense wealth, vast knowledge, and unimaginable power. They've fallen into obscurity, but make no mistake, the beings who answered these calls back when the world was dark will still do so if called upon properly and given the proper respect. I know of a ritual, one that cannot be found in any modern texts, a ritual which allows the downtrodden and angry to become what others fear. You will need the following. A silver-backed mirror. Three silver needles. A file. A rotting animal carcass. Preferably a cat or bird. A jug of ink. And the willingness to do whatever it takes to sate your hatred. You must perform the ritual in a secluded place, as what you're about to do would be unwise to do in public. First, place the mirror against the wall opposite you, making sure that you are close enough 
to see every inch of your face. Once the mirror is set up, place the file, needles, ink, and carcass around your person. Then stare at yourself in the mirror and concentrate on your hatred until it burns behind your eyes and reddens your skin. You must be in a total state of fury. Only then will the actions you take next appease the unseen beings that coil around you. Take the jug of ink and upend it over your body, making sure to cover as much of your skin in the stuff as you can. Collect as much of the ink that has missed your body as you can and apply that as well. Next, take the carcass and strip it of all meat with your bare hands. The meat should be putrefied and maggot ridden. Take any fluids that leak from the carcass and swallow as much of it as you can, keeping your vomit down once you are finished. Eat the meat as well and then take the file. What you must do next will be painful, but it must be done, no matter how agonizing it may be. Take the file and slowly Grind the edges of your teeth until the enamel is grated away, until your teeth are pointed like those of an animal. Sharpen all of your front teeth and spit the blood in your mouth onto the mirror. This will signal to the beings that live outside of our reality that you are ready for the next step. Wait and gather up your strength. Then, take the three needles and place the first two above your eyes in such a way as to pin the eyelids up. Insert the last needle through your tongue. Now that you have suffered, the old ones will know that you are worthy and you may begin the final stages. Bear your newly sharpened teeth and say these words as clearly as you can. I hate and am hated. I've bled and now I will make them bleed. I will accept the call of the shadows and join the endless war on humanity until the day I die. Make me what others fear. Make me a monster. The change will happen shortly thereafter. Your pores will weep fluids that will bind your limbs together. Your innards will dissolve and force their way out from every orifice. Your eyes will liquefy and your skin will unravel like thread. This will occur within the span of an hour and when it is done you will emerge from the stinking slurry of your old body as something new, something powerful and ageless and very, very horrific. I cannot say what you will look like. The old ones will decide what your new form will look like. But rest assured, it will make others cower before you. You will have become a monster and you will join your freakish brethren in the dark corners of the world, in the moors and castles, in the tombs and sepulchres beneath the earth and in the ocean's depths, capering through the lonely forests or flying through the dark. You will terrorize and kill, maim 
and mutilate. You will be art of an army of shades and boogeymen. You will sate your hatred, and then some. But be warned. You will shun the light from that day until you are killed. And you will never, ever return to human form. So, be wary, my friend. Be sure of your own will, for failure will result in the old ones taking your mind to their realm and leaving your body a blank, rotting shell. <laughs> Such are their ways.